There are different ways to measure poverty and happiness and uh, prosperity. <laughs> A little bumpy. And then let's go. I will bring you to the USA today. Not in United States of America. Sorry. <laughs> okay. USA or United States of America. We're the poor, poor people living inside the world. In one house. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they can occupy about five person or three person in one room without kitchen. Just a bit. Okay. Do you want to visit this kind of house? Sure, yeah. But we are rich. We are rich. Rich with family and rich with uh, joy and mm -hmm. spirit. Somebody thinks that we are poor, but it depends on how you measure it. There are different ways to measure poverty and happiness and uh, prosperity. Mm -hmm. My mom and I gave Rochelle, our tour guide, a short break while the two of us checked out Casa Manila. It is a beautifully constructed 1980s replica of the colonial houses during the Spanish era. It's really one of the most beautiful places here in Intramuros, the old Spanish house. So iconic. It's funny how I used to think that this is actually one of the old houses from back in the 19th century, but it's actually only about 40 years old. Whereas there's always a tour going on. That's a given. This is now the site where many of the tours around the Chamorros have started, and I was fortunate enough to have had a tour by the legendary Calero Soldran. This beautiful square with a fountain helps to vividly recreate the rich merchant's way of life in the 19th century. There is also a museum and a restaurant in the premises, but we will get to these in future videos. Casa Manila is a copy of an 1850s San Nicolas house in the nearby district of Minondo, which has some of the oldest architecture in all of Manila. The Intramuros administration was established in 1979 for the purpose of restoration of some of the colonial era architecture, and Casa Manila, which was built just opposite of the St. Augustine Church, stands as one of their major achievements. My mom and I made plans to come back here to have lunch in Barber's Heritage Restaurant, but in the meantime, we had to meet up with Rochelle to continue our tour. Don't worry, you bring your traffic enforcer. <laughs> so, this is the oldest church in the Philippines. Well, this one. This one was built in 1571 at the Gomu. So, they used only nipa and bamboo. So, it was destroyed by the Mahong attack of Chinese pirates in 1574. Uh -huh. so oh, 15, just a few years. Mm -hmm. In 1575, they rebuilt another one. But they used to move. Okay. But also destroyed because of the fire. Because there is a burial of the governor here and they sent here. And then someone left the candle with the fire, so it was burned. In 1578, they rebuilt another building they chose to use. Um, and then uh -huh. they used also white eggs. Oh, white eggs? Yes, oh. because before there's no cement. Like a uh, like glue. Mm, yes. If you work uh, like a glue. Uh, huh? And then this one destroyed only the left tower in 1863, if I'm not mistaken, during the earthquake. But oh. the Manila Cathedral, I destroyed this one. Mm. Okay. Can I stand the car? Alright. St. Augustine Church had a surprisingly steep entrance fee for three people, so we decided to take in this view from the doorway area so that we can move on to other tour spots. The chandelier is 
actually over there. That one is about 200 years. That one is from Paris. It's made from bronze, silver, and gold. Oh. The recent one is 1578. Oh, 1578. So this one is must be 437 years. Wow, okay. And then this door, they call this door as the and it was curved by the Chinese. Okay. Yeah, so this bell fell because of the earthquake, so now they're keeping it here inside. The church was looted by the British occupying Manila in 1762. Then in 1854, it went through renovations before the strongest earthquake at the time hit Manila, destroying much of the city in 1863, with San Agustin Church being the only public building left undamaged. Several earthquakes struck Manila again in 1880, permanently damaging the bell tower. This is the flag of the Philippines. This one is the sign of Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Uh -huh. And this eight rays is the sign of the eight um, location who fight against the Spaniards. <laughs> and then this one is symbolized as the for the blood who give or who protect the Philippines. And this one is for freedom. And this is the only flag in the world that has two sides. So I mean, you can have it like this, or you can have it upside down yes. in, in times so of war. If they have a war, they put this one. Right. No. During times of war, they put it upside down, so the oh. red side is on top and blue is on the bottom. So I will bring you to the Intramuros Museum. Okay. This concludes part 2 of our tour of Inchomoros. If you have enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And stay tuned for future episodes coming at you from the Time Lapse Traveler.